Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. In this video, I'm revisiting a video I did a couple weeks ago on creating motion links with gears on this 3D printed card shuffler. But I had some people ask, how did I get the cards to go into the card shuffler? So that's what we're going to show this week. So let's take a look. So in this example, I have the gears already meshed correctly. And then you'll notice I created a slider joint between the card and this angled um, you know, 3D printed piece right here. And I did the same thing on the other side. So right now there's no linkages at all. If I look underneath, I added a couple little white notches right here so you can visually see what's happening as we rotate uh, this shaft so we can kind of see those little rubber grommets are going to end up grabbing the card and pulling it through into uh, the middle area here. So just like I used um, in creating these gears, I used the command motion link. And what this is asking for is joints. So I linked, for example, this larger gear with this medium gear. And when I did that, it allowed me to specify uh, what the um, number of teeth were. That was what the last video was about. So in this example, I'm going to create a motion link. But I'm going to link the rotation of this shaft with the slider joint. And now you can kind of see it gives us some feedback of what that's going to look like. And what it's basically saying is for every 360 degrees that the shaft rotates, it's going to slide six inches, which is obviously not what we want in this case. It also looks like it's going the wrong direction. So I'm going to hit reverse. And now we can kind of see that makes a little bit more sense. But how far do we need it to move? for every revolution. I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and let's just take a look at what this did. So you can kind of see as I rotate this, it's moving the card way faster than I would expect it to. So basically what I want to find out is for every revolution, how far is that? Well, you'll notice on these rubber grommets, I have this imprinted edge right here. So I can go ahead and measure that edge and it tells me that the total length of that edge is 2.016. It also tells me what the diameter and the radius is, but the length is what's important. And you'll notice when I hover over that number, it says click to copy into the clipboard. So I'm just going to click and then hit close. Now if I edit my motion link that I just created, I'm going to paste that number in there. So I'm going to do control V and we can see it pasted that 2.016. Now if I rotate this gear, we should see that it makes a lot more sense. So we can kind of see how this notch is lining up with the club and it looks like it's pushing about the same speed as that card is moving. So this makes way more sense for the number of revolutions to bring that card into the center. Now, what about the other card? Well, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna create a motion link, but instead of linking the shaft with the card, we can actually link both of these slider joints. And now you'll notice one is moving way faster than the other one, and we can kind of see what it's saying here is for every 0.394 inches that one of them moves, the other one's moving six inches. So obviously we want those to be the same. So I'm going to say 0.394. And now the preview makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say OK. And as I rotate this, they're both moving the same distance as we rotate those gears. So that's how I created the um, cards to look like they're being pulled into the center. Now I can't make them like drop down and all kind of stuff. All I really did here was create some slider joints 
and linked them to some Revolut joints. Here's another example that you might have. So I have this conveyor belt and it has a whole bunch of, you know, these rollers on here and I want all of them to roll at the same time. And as they're rolling, I want the cardboard box to roll along the conveyor belt. Now I've already created uh, some Revolut joints. You can see them on here already. So all I have to do is come in and say motion link. I'm just going to link that one to that one. And you'll notice they're going opposite of each other. And I, I um, embossed these this little groove down here so you can visually see what's going on. If there wasn't anything on there, you couldn't really tell they're rotating. So in the motion link, we have this reverse. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on reverse, and now you can see they're both rotating in the same direction. And I'll say okay, and I'll just repeat that. So I'll come in here and say motion link, and let's link the second and the third one together. And we can see that those look good. And I'll do that one more time. I'll link this one and this one together. And I had already linked the other ones just to save some time, but I just wanted to show you how I linked a couple of them together at the beginning. So now if we rotate one of the rollers, all of the rollers rotate. Now I want this cardboard box to slide along. So I'm gonna create an as-built joint because the box is already where I want it to be. So I'm gonna say as-built joint. I'm gonna make sure the motion type is set to slider. And I'm just gonna basically link um, this cardboard box to slide along in this direction. So I'm just gonna pick like this rail here, for example, and then I can pick a point on this edge. And you'll see, it kind of gives me a quick preview of that box rolling back and forth. I'll go ahead and say OK. And if I grab this box now, we can see how it slides back and forth. Well, now I want it to actually go along as the rollers are pulling it along. So again, we'll use Motion Link. And I'll just link one of these Revolut joints, this first one, for example, with the slider. and Again, we're getting kind of a weird preview, um, but what it's basically saying is for every 360 degrees this rotates, it's going to move uh, 10 millimeters. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK, and I'll start to rotate one of these, and we can see that obviously that is not correct. It's only mo moving hardly at all, like 10 millimeters. So I want to figure out how far does it need to go. Well, let's go ahead and inspect one of the edges on this roller. And we can see that the length of that edge is 157. So once again, I'll click to copy that into my clipboard. Let's go ahead and edit this motion link. And for every revolution, for every 360 degrees, we're gonna have it go 157 millimeters. I'll say OK, and now when I rotate the rollers, we can see that sure enough that box is rolling along about the same speed as those indentations. So there you go. And if I grab the box, you can see how the roller, or all the rollers move as I grab that box. So Motion Link is actually a very powerful command. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.